Live with the latest on the terrorist attacks is our London correspondent, Jonathan Sacerdoti. Jonathan, thanks for being with us. Uh, what's the latest? Hi, Michelle. Well, we've heard from De uh, Assistant Chief Commissioner of the Met, uh, Mark Rowley, uh, a little bit more about what they're willing to reveal about the attacks today. We know, for example, that when questioned by the press, he did say that the police were aware of who the attacker was, but they weren't willing to share that. And when asked whether or not it was connected to ISIS, they again didn't answer the question directly, but did say that the assumption was it was connected to Islamist or Islamic terrorism. Uh, this is something which may not seem surprising to those who observed exactly the kind of attack it was on a high-profile place like the House of Commons uh, on Wal and on Westminster Bridge just next to it, a car ramming into pedestrians. And we now know again from that press conference that the death toll stands at five, including the attacker himself and that 48-year-old diplomatic corps police officer who had been expecting, he said, to go home to his family after his shift, but of course who was killed in that brutal attack right very tragic uh, Jonathan there's some reports that the man believed to be behind this uh, is Abu Izzedin he's a hate preacher from London someone that has uh, spoken out very vocally in praise of Islamic terrorism has that been confirmed at all Absolutely not, and we have to be pretty careful at this stage with naming potential people who might be uh, the suspect. Channel 4 News, a UK channel, did at one point suggest that they knew that that was the identity, uh, but then there seemed to be some confusion as the lawyers for that man claimed he is still in fact in jail, which means of course it couldn't have been him who carried out the attack. As is often the case with these terror events, there's a lot of rumour that goes around and reports that are as yet unsubstantiated. Things. Uh, come out and then let's say get reeled back in for now all we know is that that killer is the police are saying most likely connected to some sort of Islamic terrorism which as I said the attack bore all the hallmarks of uh, but for the meantime they're not revealing exactly what they do know about him they've said that the crime scene investigation will continue for some hours and that police forces will be present around the country much more visibly both armed and unarmed remember of course that the British police forces in general unarmed uh, but there will be more armed police around visible to put people's minds at rest but not specifically because they know of any further threat and to that end the threat level of the country is staying the same which is the second highest at severe but it's not being increased to critical which of course uh, only happens when there is a known threat of an impending attack and Jonathan what is the mood there like in London is it a sense of the British keep calm and carrying on Uh, to a large extent, that's exactly right. Uh, Theresa May and the police have said that Parliament will open tomorrow and carry on with business as usual. But of course, people are mourning those who were killed, and they are also looking at the now 40 people who are said to have been injured in the attacks. Uh, so the country is trying to get on with its business as it would do normally. But it's very difficult to do that when somebody has struck at the very heart of British democracy and British life here in Westminster. All right, thanks so much. Jonathan Sacerdoti, live from London, thank you for joining us. Coming up, we're going to hear firsthand from eyewitnesses who saw and heard the London terrorist attacks in person. Plus, some more on the electronics ban for US bound flights from some Middle East and African countries. You watching Clear Cut? Stay with us.